Hello and welcome back to Off Workouts. We're here to help you stay fit and strong as you get older. I'm here with Andy once again and uh, we've got another cracking workout for you, uh, haven't we Andy? Yeah, thanks Dom. Um, it's great to be back. We've had a, uh, another few days off the bike for various reasons. We all know what that's like. Life gets in the way, but thankfully uh, we've scheduled this in and we've all been able to make it. So it feels like we've done the workout already really, so we could probably just get off. <laughs> And um, <laughs> congratulate ourselves. Chatting and preparing yeah. to record and get yeah. on with it, yeah. So uh, without further ado, let's start this workout. And we are off. Lovely. So we go straight into our bog standard six minute and really, 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 really necessary warm up. Yes. So six minutes of this. And we, the idea is that the resistance or your pedal speed takes you to a level somewhere about three to four on the RPE. And just a quick recap on that. Naught is you're lying on your couch, not doing very much. 10 is the hardest you've ever worked in your life. We work obviously beneath between those bands. So we're going from a relative resting state and we're now working our way up through the warm up. And the idea is that we're gonna to get to a three, a four, and then we're pushing a five. So five is kind of midway, we're still comfortable. And the way you can judge that is as your legs are turning, we can converse. So really all the way up to kind of a, a level six uh, conversation is relatively easy. If you can't get your words out um, because you're thinking so much or your body's prioritizing and rightfully so, your breathing mechanism and you're working too hard. So we appreciate that it might be hard work if you're on your own. Um, but just, uh, I'm just trying to think of a practical way of working out your RPE using the conversational um, limits. I think what you've done to, to date is very helpful, I find, is sort of, you know, is that, is that once you get into five and six, you're huffing, you're, you're, you're slightly short yeah. of breath as, yeah. you, as you try yeah. to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah. I found that really helpful. Yeah. Uh, certainly at this stage, I'm happy to talk yeah. ad infinitum, but oh, then it's not right. way. And so. of course these bands, these limits are quite, they're quite nebulous, you know. There's a there's a there's a very fuzzy area between each of the uh, between each of the steps, and that can that varies depending on how you feel for the day. So if you have increments on your bike and you think, well, I know that if my resistance button is at this point, I'm a five. Well, in two days' time, it might not be a five yeah, because you're just like you know you've got a compounding amount of exercise, slightly fatigued, or you might be feeling really chipper. Well, I am and feeling chipper. Are least, you? At least I'm feeling well. I, I've had a bit of time off the booze, which has been good. Oh. I had a good sleep last night. A week. It's good. No, okay. Three weeks now. I'm in three weeks. 21 now. days. Uh, and uh, but I have looked at the profile of this ride, which you will see there, uh, and uh, <clears throat> I think I might not be feeling quite so chipper when we get into the latter stages of this. Well, that's true. Uh, it's going to be interesting. We've got a we've got a, a, a tough 40 minute session ahead we'll of us. So it's a 40 minute session. We're approaching kind of halfway through the warm up. Now, I've increased my resistance slightly because I'm starting to feel warm now. The legs are starting to spin quite nicely. So I think I'm somewhere that you can hear that I'm having to uh, kind of stagger yeah. my words, which is good. So I think I'm up near a kind of a four to five, which is where I want to be. So I'm quite happy this is a four to five for me. Yeah. Now, six minutes of this, our next block, is gonna go, it's gonna be four minutes. So from six minutes to 10 minutes, and we're going straight up to a level six. So one notch up, but don't forget, when you increase that resistance, it takes a while for your body to catch up. Initially, you probably don't notice it, unless you've really turned it up. But you'll really know it's a six after about 35, 45, 55 seconds. That's when the body runs through, makes all its adjustments, and then compensates for that load. And also, with these, uh, with these videos, with these workouts, it's perfectly fine to turn the resistance back down to make it easier for yourself. Be kind to yourself, you know, we're not, here to, we're not here to just end up in a puddle on the floor. This is about enjoyment and activity, and certainly for myself and Dom, it's about conversation camaraderie, which, uh, yeah. which is so important as you get older, and if you can link that with your fitness, Brilliant, you're ticking, you're ticking a lot of really good boxes. True enough, and we have also got, uh, you'll notice we've got three cameras today. One of them I'm going to dub Cadence Cam. Wow. Uh, in as much as you can see how quickly or 
importantly, our legs are turning around. And as we've said many times, and one of the recent workouts was all about leg speed. Yeah, RPM. You yeah. can you can really do a lot with at a low resistance level if you keep those legs turning the fast. Legs turning. And, uh, really good discipline. You know, I think. Yeah, you'll notice Andy's are probably turning faster than mine, but I'm trying to keep up. Yeah, I'm just trying to focus on my leg speed. Certainly, I feel physiologically after these workouts, if I've if I've concentrated on my leg speed, I feel a massive benefit of the general kind of mobility around my hips, which uh, I've not been great with over the years, having played a lot of linear sport. You know, everything in a linear straight line. That's so true. Yeah. You know, like running, yes. which I love. But it's uh, certainly road running, very linear. Yeah, it's a good point. Right, so we're into the last minute of the warm up, and then we're going to go in about 45 seconds up to a six. So the conversation should become a bit more thoughtful. And I've dubbed this um, this workout the Hell of the North, which, as uh, some of you may know, is the spring classic that happens between Paris and Roubaix. And this year, I think it's on April the seventh. So we're going to make it tough. Uh, we haven't got any cobbles to ride over. We haven't got any lumps and bumps, but we are going to increase the resistance. And yeah, it's going to be quite, the, the latter stages of this, personally, are going to be quite tough, but obviously regulate it to how you feel. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay, five seconds. Four, three, two, one. To six. Put okay. that up to a six, it's not much. Don't forget it takes a while for it to kick in. Make sure you keep the leg speed up. This is that tone of the wheel. Also, early stages of this, shake yourself out. Keep the upper body nice and relaxed. Keep the shoulders relaxed. It's all about focusing the heart and lungs to turning those legs. Your, your upper body is just kind of supporting your weight for now. You know, we're not let out on the road, you haven't got to think about pulling and pushing and squeezing brake levers. This is just uh, the opposite of how old was Presley was portrayed on the TV cameras in the 50s. This is from the waist down rather than from the waist up. Yeah, and imagine holding a couple of a couple of eggs in your hands. You don't need to be pressing, exactly, and squeezing. Exactly. Yeah. Gentle on the bars. Oh, all right, that's a minute into yeah, I'm feeling our first block. Like we're so moving you, now. Yeah, so everyone happy there on a six? If you're starting to struggle, wind it down because we've got a way to go. Be kind to yourself, okay? Yeah. We've all made it this far, thus far, so we want to keep that going. So while we can breathe and speak, I'll throw a few uh, requests out to you guys watching. Please do the usual thing, engage with the content. We, The last ride we had, which uh, we recorded, was the, uh, the leg speed session and it really got you going. There's a lot of interest in that. We had a lot of feedback from all over the world. Um, yeah, really happy right. to see that. It's fantastic. Um, so please do, from Cambodia to Kansas. It was, literally. Yeah, lots, it was lots like of comments. A, so please like do a... continue with that and hopefully, or have that, you see a lot of, a good amount of yeah. women riders as well as men riders. Yeah. So please do keep those comments coming and keep your thoughts coming. Um, they don't all have to be positive, but it's nice when they are, obviously, but you can make constructive criticisms of what we're doing if you, if you spot anything. Yeah. Uh, and we've also done an interview, a couple of interviews, so have a look at those with specialists on, on diet and fitness as you age. So please do look at those. Wow. All right, let's keep that leg speed going. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, just think efficiency, just think, kind of think, you know, this is a time to think very linear, to think everything moving forwards. No effort or energy wasted anywhere else. <coughs> yeah, I'm definitely yeah. at a six. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be working any harder than this. Well, no, we've got some in the workout. Eights and nines to come. And we have. <coughs> got to conserve a bit of energy. That's a, quite a skill, isn't it? The energy conserving thing. It really is, and that comes with kind of you know, training and also understanding how your body works, which is why knowing the RPE scale is so important that you can save yourself for a later ride. And you know, we've all had those rides where you've been out and you've gone too hard too early or too long and you're 
just stopping at every corner shop on the way home, <laughs> loading yourself up with that's so true. absolute rubbish. I'll have four of those cakes, please, and yeah, three two cups flat of jacks, coffee. Yeah. Bag of Haribo, <laughs> and a can of Coke. Yes. Yeah, nonsense. Right, 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds, then we go down to a two minute block, back to a five. So a nice bit of respite. But let's keep that, it's important after we emphasize the leg speed last week that we continue with the focus. And as you get older, you really have to think about your leg speed. Sorry, sorry people, but you do. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one, back to a five. That's it. Always feels rather nice. Yeah, your leg speed shouldn't drop, shouldn't increase either. Then you relax the breathing. Okay, the load's off, so the legs can start pumping that blood up to the lungs, get it reoxygenated, bringing it back to the muscles, ready for the next four minute block, which happens at minute 12. And we're going up to seven. Seven, where the air is a bit thinner. So, myself and Don were talking before the session started about how we feel as we get older about riding outdoors on the roads. So we'd be interested to hear your views on how much road riding you do, where you do it. I mean, that's great. I'd love to see some of the routes you do. And yes, do share pictures. If you could you can share pictures of some of the routes you do, that's super inspirational, it really is. Uh, but it's interesting to see how much of this you do and then how much, if you like, cycling you do. And whether you use this as a way to get yourself fit for outdoors, or is this a kind of a standalone activity and you're like, I love cycling, but it's my kind of cycling, which is indoors. So this is a discussion we had earlier about the perception of cycling and who does what, where, and when. And discussing the, we both live in London, and London is an amazing city, but it's not really designed no. for cycling. Certainly the center of it, it's, uh, it's not, no. it's trying, it's working hard at that, but it's, it's got a lot of work to do to make yeah. it more conducive to, yeah. to, to getting on your bike and going yeah, out for it a really ride. Has, yeah. um, so sometimes that puts people off. Okay, we've got 10 more seconds of the, of the steady block and then we're going to go up to level seven. So we're jumping from a five to a seven in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so you go through the six, but again, don't go too far. Remember it takes the best part of a minute for your body to make these adjustments and for the load to come on and for the heart and lungs to compensate and for the, the blood to release the oxygen into the muscles. Are we going to freestyle our out of saddle action today, Andy? Yeah, I think there will be. I think on the nine block, certainly, we'll do some out of saddle just because that's going to seem like an eternity. Yeah, I'm slightly nervous about the four minutes at a nine, but we'll see. Yeah. <clears throat> Definitely for me, I find if I've got four minutes, what I quite quickly do is break it down into, into Second. eight 30 minute blocks, yeah, into one take, eight 30 minute blocks, and think about how I can vary it in that time. Yeah. It was interesting, I remember reading, I think it was uh, Chris Boardman talking about when he was going for the hour record, which is on the velodrome, typically at altitude, where you ride as fast as you can, and then ultimately as far as you can in 60 minutes. And he was talking about, or writing about, the mind games, about how he juggled between percentages, ratios, minutes, hours, anything to make the elapsed time seem more beneficial and the remaining time uh, more diminished. This is a really interesting way that the psychology of those top cyclists comes into play when they really are on the rivet you know, putting everything in for 60 minutes. The longest hour of your life, surely. And how far did he ride, you know? I hour? can't remember. Do you know what, I can't remember. <clears throat> the hour record seems to have perhaps gone off the radar a bit. It used to be a real yes, thing yes, I remember for that. cyclists. It, but then it seemed like it was getting smashed every year. Like it did, it was stationary for a long time. And then over the space of a few years, riders seemed to be attacking it and beating it by quite a margin. So I need to reacquaint myself with with that. But it is about blocking things, chunking things down. It really helps, yeah. even if you just think about the end of the next block. Yeah. 
get to the next yeah. set. Yeah. Ooh, this is good. I'm at, I'm at a seven definitely and my legs feel good today. I hate to say that to you everyone. You know those, some of those days when in cycling terms they just say, I didn't have the legs. Which means some days, for whatever reason, your just legs aren't as good as they should be. But today, I feel like I've got the legs. It would be nice to understand with more certainty what it is. I mean, obviously if you have a late night or you know, you're, you know, you're eating, doing the wrong things, you kind of know what the line is. Yeah. To where you how you feel but sometimes it is it feels kind of arbitrary doesn't it it does it does and we're a complicated beast it seems. yeah and i think if you refer to um uh dom's last uh, interview where he touches on the effect of i would say it's predominantly diet yeah as absolutely. to the kind of biorhythms of your body and what what brings you up and what brings you down that's a that's a very interesting subject yes it is and of course if you're looking to do a certain event or you want to go out for the day and do a, a run or a whatever a walk it'd be nice to know what the absolute optimum preparation is so you could optimize your time because time is such a precious commodity we want to make the best of it and uh and perhaps at times we don't deliberately don't do the best yeah, sure. we don't do the best prep almost knowingly okay i think we're approaching the end of this block so it's 16 minutes, so in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, back to a five. That's gonna feel quite easy, but don't, try and keep the leg speed up. Res resistance is off, there's no need for the leg speed to drop. Certainly on my flywheel, I can hear a constant tone. Yes. Uh, constant pitch. And your flywheel uh, makes a nice slow hum. It does. Mine's less it's like a bit of nice bit of medieval drone. Yes, mine's got a sort of click going on. Yeah, it? you've got a bit of you've got a bit of percussion in there. Yes. <laughs> the rhythm. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Right. I'm starting to start to drip a bit now as well. Yes. It's a cool morning. Of course, we're in the we're in the cabin. Don't forget, on these sections, keep the upper body relaxed. Nice Shoulders relaxed. relaxed. Keep that leg speed up. Yes? You do have to think about that. You really do. Both those leg speed and I mean, because I've got a new bit of tech on my phone, which means I can see us as we ride, and I can see how, well, tense I sometimes look without thinking about it. Yeah. Just need to relax the shoulders and the yeah. hands. And keep the legs turning. Focus on the, on the bottom half of the body, as you say. Yeah. And these spin bikes that we're on, static bikes, you know, they're bulk standard factory bikes. We haven't adjusted the gearing or the cranks or the pedals. It's all kind of straight out the box and get on it. So it's very much, you know, trying to remove the barriers to your fitness. You know, indoor cycling is a great way to, to get your kind of key fitness up. It won't cover every base but it's, uh, it'll cover a fair few. Now I think, looking okay. at you. So we've got five, four, three, two, one, wall up to an eight. Now this is gonna be, it gets tough. This is gonna be a murder, isn't it? Give me silence. So I'm, just, I'm just looking at you there, thinking uh, you've sweated up rather quicker than me today, which is unusual, yeah. which only, can only suggest that I'm not quite working hard enough. I think it's because I haven't sweated for a couple of days. <laughs> Maybe I've got, oh, I can't before I answer this without really thinking hard. Right. We're into the tough level eight, four sections. minutes. So between minute 18 and minute 22. Let's go. Yeah. Relax your upper body. I'm going to shut up for a little bit now. Listen to the tunes, watch the legs turn. Stay on it. Focus on where we are. Yeah, this is very tough. Yeah. But if you're with us, this is working, this is doing your body a lot of good. Yeah. Just 
with us. Perhaps not your carpet if you're dripping yeah. everywhere. Now we're training. Now we're training. I might have a jump out of my saddle at 20 minutes if I say. Do it. Yeah. This is tough now. Okay. Just over two more minutes. Okay, jump up. Okay. At level eight. Slightly wobbly. Yeah. Oh. I try to look around the room, thinking anything that will pique my attention and take my mind off the intensity and the clock, which has got all kind of Salvador Dali like. I'm not moving, I'm dripping. Of course, when you're on the road or outdoors, you can you'll be putting in effort, but you've got things to pique your interest, to distract you from what you're doing, which is, which is nice. When you're in these almost laboratory conditions, unless you've got some kind of beautiful backdrop, like the forests of Oregon or Pacific Ocean laughing at your door, hopefully that's intentional, then, it can be tough, so we appreciate that. We really do. Which means you're tougher. Indeed. Right. We are over the halfway mark in this yeah. bucket. This is always a key point. Oh. Okay, 40 more seconds at this block. Very tough. Let's keep pushing it. Yep. And the waist down, relax the upper body. Yeah, relax the upper body. Relax the breathing. Oh, 20 seconds. Turn in those legs. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. 10 seconds. No. Okay, so in five, four, three, two, one, down to a five. Oh, yes. Keep your legs turning. Keep your legs turning. Okay. Put resistance off. And make sure you do give yourself a bit of a break there. Make sure it is a five and not a, a six. It just feels a bit easier. Five should be halfway, pretty comfortable. Admittedly, you're coming off a tough break, tough block. So it'll take a while for you to feel comfortable. But the idea being just as your body settles, Heart and lungs get used to the lack of load. Oxygenated blood comes back into the body, back to the major leg muscles. Then we're ready to go again. Kind of classic interval training. And of course we're trying to mirror outdoor conditions as best we can. With flat sections and hilly sections. I haven't yet introduced the coffee shop at 30 minute mark. Right. So we're going up to a nine next, right? Yeah, next block in 45 seconds, we're going up to a nine. Now, if you want to stay at an eight or stay at this, we appreciate that eight was tough, but it's your personal nine. So nine is you're working very hard. It's not going to feel particularly pleasant on your legs. And if it becomes too unpleasant, what we don't want you to do is kind of stop or the legs almost become prevented from turning, like you're running in molasses or something. You should always have healthy leg speed. That's what cycling's about. You know, and it's not a hill. You know, on a hill you can't change the gradient, but with this, on these bikes, you can change the load. So, as I said to you before, be kind to yourself. It's gotta be fun as well. You've oh, enjoy man. It. I mean, <laughs> man, this is source. fun. Right, in five, four, three, two, one, nine. Okay. Gotta keep those legs oh. turning. Oh. Right. This is gonna. So I'm gonna break this down, do one minute and then be in and out of the saddle to vary the 
the strain and the muscles that are being used. No problem with my sweat now. And we are halfway through the first minute of four at nine. If you're sticking with us, well done. This is gonna be challenging. And he goes into race competitor mode yeah. at these high levels. I don't want to talk. No. I just want the oxygen, everything, efficiency going to these oh, muscles. Yeah, yeah. This is the hardest block of the, of the session. <coughs> I want to get the best out of it. For a minute in, I'm going to have a little burst out. It shouldn't be easier out of the saddle. It's just different. Pushing everybody, stay with us. Wow, two more minutes. Come on. Oh, wow. Relax that upper body done. Relax. Drop your shoulders slightly. Yeah, this is very hard now. <sighs> We're still here, guys. I hope you are too. Just focus. <clears throat> Last minute of this hardest block. Keep it going everybody, this is great work. Oh. Half a minute left, out of level nine. Last 15. <laughs> Last 10. Last five, four, three, two, one. Back off to a five. Oh. Try to keep the legs turning. So we're in a, to use Andy Fraser, active recovery, which yeah, is not stopping or even slowing the legs. Keep them turning. That was tough. Okay, we've got one more block. <sighs> Exercise, active, intense block to go. That's going to kick in at minute 30. Go for four minutes, we're going back up to a level eight. So it's still going to feel tough, especially because we're going to be fatigued from the block of nine. So, again, be kind to yourself. Don't overdo it. Keep those legs spinning, keep your breathing relaxed. At level eight, we may be able to get a couple of words out, but it's not going to be easy.
It'd be lovely to hear about progress that any of you are making following along with our sessions. If you've noticed a, a change in how you feel, how you're riding, anything, do just share. And as we said earlier, we'd love to see pictures of you in your on your on your static bike or yeah, be great. Be great. Photos of you out and about where you happen to ride if you do go out on the road. So do share that stuff with us. Okay, 15 seconds. We go up to level eight. 10, five, four, three, two, one, level eight. Whoa. Yeah. And that leg speed up. Yeah, that's it, Dom. Keep the legs spinning. Turning. Last block. Come on, let's keep it going. Good. Good. Yeah, that, you might wander to other things. And, yeah. But don't let it wander to the point where you stop your... Your legs being out. So a minute in. Oh my goodness. Let's chat. Yeah, no chat now. No chat. No chat. Get that leg speed up, Dom. Relax the upper body. It's very hard. Now. Last two minutes. <clears throat> and then we drop off back to the five. Stay with us everyone. Yeah. You're doing great if you're still here. If it's getting really, really tough, take the resistance down a bit. Yeah. I want you to finish these sessions feeling good. These shouldn't be defeating you. These workouts should not defeat you. You're better than that. Keep it going, everyone. You're doing great. You really are. You're with us now. Yeah. It's hard. But the end is in sight. Yeah. Always useful to me. Last minute of the block. And then we're going into a six minute extended cool down. Because these have been intense blocks. Last 30 seconds. How about anyone else? And I've said this before, it feels like the hardest thing we've done. <laughs> Last 15. Come on. Push it out. Last 10. Come on. <laughs> Relax. Last five. Five, four, three, two, one. Load off. Oh. oh. Try. Keep the legs standing. I'm finding yeah. that quite hard. You're still gonna, your body's still requiring those legs to spin. This element enables your recovery. You have to keep the large muscles moving. 
to aid those venous returns, yeah? The blood coming back to the heart, getting pumped back round again. So load off. You said it would be tough. Yeah. You were not like, no. But of course it's subjective, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's, although if anyone found that easy, they're not doing it right. It's everyone's tough. <laughs> it's everyone's tough. Exactly. You got through that and did that eight, nine, eight block on your personal RPE scale, really well done. Fair play, guys. Yeah, well really done. well yeah, done. Effort. That's hard. And you can be sure that the day in front of you uh, will only get will, better. Will be a good one because you did that. Yeah. Oh, it's fun. It's fun. It's yeah. So I haven't got clips. I haven't got toe clips or cleats on these pedals. I kind of rely on my feet to kind of do the pushing which uh, I tend to do on static bikes. I'm not sure whether it's totally beneficial or not. Yeah, I am quite made my mind up. I've been doing it for years, but yeah. So Andy, yeah. we talked about these setup we've got, yeah. which is, I said rudimentary, it's perfectly good, but it's not great, yeah. It's not technically enhanced. No, nope. uh, no. So what, have you used the Pelotons of the world? Have you no. had to go on anything else? No, I mean, I've used things like the their master bikes where they have preset programs. I mean, that's back in the day, yeah. long way back. No, I've never used the Peloton. Uh, so, but do you think it's clearly they yeah. have caught on? Um, yeah. There's a financial consideration, obviously, but do you think the mechanisms they use can be helpful? Perhaps not for you because you've got your internal yeah. Yeah. system, and I think I have too now. I, I can't really comment, I've not used them, I don't know how they measure or. Okay or how you, whether it's, whether it's linked to heart rate monitors and you have constant feedback on RPM. Yeah, I'm probably the wrong person to talk about, well I am the wrong person, to talk about those kind of, yeah, but I think for, for me the use of a static bike has always been an alternative to outdoor cycling. Compliment to, yeah. Compl a yeah, compliment to, yeah, yeah. And I've always tried to keep it as simple as possible, which is you know, very standard, off the shelf, Spin bike, but the crucial the crucial two factors are are how many times you use it yep. and what you do on it. So regardless of what bike you use, if it's going to sit in the corner and you're going to hang your vest on it, it's um it's a waste of time. It's about which is why we designed these workouts was because we know, like us, it can be difficult to motivate yourself and you think, well, what do I, what do, I do? Just get on it and ride for yeah. half an hour? But of course, there's so much you can do. And by varying the workouts and the intensity, we're working different aspects of the cardiovascular system and different aspects of the muscular system. So we're trying to leave as much as we can on a bike, no stone unturned. And also, there's that big psychological thing where you're having to kind of question yourself when you're working hard. Can I keep this going? Can I keep this going? So I think it's, it's a wonderful tool uh, to be able to do that. Um, low impact, accessible, um, yeah, I think it's a wonderful deal. It won't, won't work for everybody, it won't fit everybody. There'll be adjustments to be made, but yeah, we certainly get a lot out of it and we hope you do. And of course, as well as static bikes like the ones we're on, you can get the stands for your back wheel where you basically stand your back wheel and so you're even cheaper, I guess. Turbo trainers, yeah. Turbo trainers, exactly. And then you need a bike. You need a bike. You need you a bike to yeah, put in yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. Um, so yeah, again, call out to you guys if you, want to send us what you're training on, that'd be useful, it'd be yeah. interesting to see what kind of bikes you use, um, and if any of you have got experience of Pelotons and, and the like, uh, yeah. and how you find this compares to, yeah. to those kinds of sessions. Of course, we talk a lot about people doing this at home, but of course if you've got a smartphone or an iPad and you belong to a leisure centre, and they've got static bikes, yeah. then you can take that bit of tech along, log into the Wi-Fi, load up these videos, yeah. and sit on a public bike in a public space and do the workout. So you don't, re you don't need your own bike, you just need access to a bike. Yeah. So, you know, I'm very keen on, re you know, removing as many barriers to exercise and fitness as you can and yeah. not making it tech or kit specific. Because yeah. that's just something else that's gonna stop people getting involved. And that's not right. Especially for cycling, right? You know, it should be, again, to quote, like Chris Boardman, he's like, you know, go cycling in your jeans. You know, just go cycling. Like, don't 
think I need this and I need that. You know, on the road, yeah, helmet, but it's like removing barriers to sport is something that, yeah. you know, we're not very good at in this country. We're trying to, you know, putting barriers up. Anyway, last 20 seconds of this. Yeah. Whew. Good session that was, really good. Now, because that was a hard workout, if you want to con continue, continue your legs spinning for another couple of minutes, which I probably am, I'm going to take the load right off now, and I'm going to sit up, and I'm just going to almost let, give myself a couple of minutes to come to a standstill. But we are done, 40 minutes is up. We are done. That was a great workout. Uh, well done, Andrew. Thank you for pushing Dominic. me. Um, that was Andy Pollentine's Hell of the North. Yeah. Google it if you don't know what we're talking about. It's Hell of like, the North it's a circuit. crazy race uh, that happens. Yeah. <laughs> Head Southern. of the North Downs, there you go. Um, the so Downs. have a look at that. Uh, as I say, like, comment, share, subscribe, as we always do. Please do keep your engagement coming. We love it. It yeah. makes all of this worthwhile. Yep. Uh, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you soon. We'll have another ride in the coming uh, few days and weeks. So, uh, but for now, that's it from me and Andy. Thank you.